Hey, this is The Fight Nerd. Joining me now is James Ergot to discuss The Striking Truth. Now, James, what is The Striking Truth about? It's uh, about two fighters, uh, David Loazzo and George St. Pierre, and it follows them over several years and all the ups and downs in their career. And uh, it's very interesting because, of course, they're uh, close friends, and they both came out of uh, Quebec, Canada, and uh, training in the same camp. And uh, both UFC fighters, uh, David at one point uh, fighting Rich Franklin for the uh, middleweight title. And, of course, uh, uh, everybody uh, is pretty familiar with George St. Pierre being welterweight uh, champion right now. So uh, it covers uh, several, several years of, of their journey and, and how it, uh, you know, how they've taken separate roads and, you know, how their friendship has developed and changed. Now, this began shooting around the time of, I guess, was UFC 58 and wrapped up around UFC 94. Is that correct? Correct, yes. All right, so you guys must have hours upon hours upon days worth of footage. I mean, how much footage did you guys have by the end of the production? I can't tell you uh, in terms of hours, but I think both Stephen and I just watched uh, the latest rough cut yesterday, which is about uh, 90 minutes in length, and, you know, it's uh, chopped up, you know, I mean, it's edited of all this footage and uh it's really quite shocking when you see how much is there and what i mean by that is different interviews at different times in different places uh probably the most glaring contrast is we open the movie uh with a tour of george st pierre's house and this was several years ago and then there's a shot later in the film where we show his house now and it's the same house and we're able to kind of morph uh, how it's changed and show that to the audience and uh, you know obviously he looks a lot older now and even going back uh, before he was in the UFC we have footage from back then in fact really kind of spans their entire career All right now filming a documentary is really about capturing the right moment at the right time being in the right place at the right time were there ever any yeah. moments where you were worried about not getting something really important because there was a problem shooting in the location or just not having the camera ready, or, or anything like that? Well, I think the biggest thing is not so much in terms of something technical. I think my biggest fear uh, is not getting the the character to open up. And what I mean by that is, you know, I, I had a very frank discussion with David Loazzo, uh prior to the, his last fight here in Vancouver. And I said, you know what, win or lose... I want to be able to show what happens. It's when they're in their darkest moment, when they face a loss, the last thing they want to do is be interviewed or have a camera in their face. So I think that is the hardest thing to overcome and the biggest thing that you're worried about as a filmmaker is the moments that are the most impactful on screen are the ones that are hardest to get because they're so intimate. Speaking of this intimacy that you guys had, what was the most surprising thing that you learned about either of the fighters during the filming of this documentary? I would say that George St. Pierre is even more likable, charismatic, and humble than you would expect. Uh, you know, here's a guy like, you're touring his house, and I mean, he, these are things that we're asking him, he just says them. You know, like he's like, this house is too big for me. You know, I I want to sell it, you know, because it's just me here. Or, you know, he's got like one car, you know, even though he makes millions of dollars, you know. He doesn't even know where his UFC belt is. We our last shoot, we wanted to shoot him doing some stuff with the UFC belt, and he's like, I, he didn't know where it was, you know. it's He's like, I think it's at my parents. I don't know. I mean, he's just <laughs> not a materialistic guy. I think both of these guys are very likable, and I think that probably would be something that people would be surprised about just because normally you just see them, you know, kind of with their war face on and getting ready for battle, and you don't see the true nature of them. I personally think it's probably, uh, you know, it sounds boastful, but I think it's going to be the best MMA documentary that I uh, you know, has ever existed up to now and possibly could ever exist because it really covers everything. I mean, we showed Dan from Tap Out 
the latest rough cut two days ago, and he was just like went crazy over it. He's like, it has everything. Um, you know, there, there's a movie Hoop Dreams that did really well at uh, Sundance, and it captured you know these two uh, basketball kids over several years. And it's kind of like that. I mean, you can't really go back in time and film people, and even if you like, let's say you start filming a, a fighter now who might become a champion or might, you have no idea what's going to happen. And to have somebody that, you know, to start filming somebody like George St. Pierre and having no idea where he would end up and then to the heights that he's at now is, is just, I mean, to some degree pure luck, you know, and um, that's really special because it's kind of like, imagine getting Michael Jordan and getting, you know, the five years building up to him becoming the biggest basketball guy at his time. So I, I really think it's a once-in-a-lifetime thing that we were able to get this. All right, now, Hoop, Hoop Dreams is able to reach a much broader audience. Do you think that a documentary about mixed martial arts like this one can appeal to mainstream fans who might not necessarily be big-time UFC or MMA fans in general? Oh, big-time. I mean, I think this uh, movie is very accessible for a number of reasons. Uh, actually, there's very little fighting in it because we can't show the UFC fights, and that's really not the story anyway. I mean, everybody has seen the fight. It's really what the story is 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 what these guys are, and any area of life, you're going to have wins and losses. You're going to have ups and downs, and that's really what we show in the movie. And in addition to that, both these guys are very likable. Okay, now, this movie is going to be distributed in 3D. Why did you choose to do this in 3D? Uh, you know, 3D is the future, uh, just like HD was a few years ago. And also, MMA lends itself to 3D. If you talk to the guys that uh, did Avatar, uh, when they, they've done practice stuff with different sports, including they've actually shot test footage uh, at Zufa's, uh down at the Ultimate Fighter. And they said that MMA is the most exciting sport they've shot in 3D. And you've got channels now that are going pure 3D and running sports, running soccer, running all these things. So it's inevitable that MMA will be in 3D. And if you were to do, let's say, a fiction film, it's really hard to do uh, fiction 3D with MMA because you the depth of field actually can show that the, the fighters are not coming in contact with each other. So it actually really works with um, with what we're doing. So. And this was shot in, in true 3D, right? Not uh, fixed up later in post production. True 3D. I mean, the whole thing wasn't shot in 3D because when we first started shooting the movie, we didn't have that technology, and it kind of really works with the story because. As the story unfolds, uh, the, the level of quality of what we shot increased. In other words, when uh, Stephen first started shooting the initial stuff with George, it was very guerrilla, very just like following him around with a camera. And then as his career grew, you know, he started to get, you know, be able to get investors to come in and get more equipment and do more things. And then in the past year, you know, I came in with Bobby and we were able to do the 3D thing and to um, shoot with the red camera and, uh, you know, just shoot stuff on, on a higher level. So it, it kind of adds to the movie because as the movie progresses, it visually starts to get more, more sharp and more intense as well. All right, now, can you tell us about any fun or embarrassing footage that got left on the cutting room floor? Uh, we might have some outtakes on the credits. Uh, George St. Pierre's actually got a very good sense of humor, so I think uh, we'll actually put some of that stuff. I mean, there are things that, uh, you know, made the cutting room floor that I could never talk about. But, <laughs> uh, yeah, definitely, uh, I think we'll throw some funny stuff in there, and Actually, there's a lot of content in the movie that is is stuff nobody's ever seen that's very open. I mean, we're talking, we filmed George, uh, you know, at his parents' place for Christmas. 
you know, like that kind of stuff. So, you know, him, you know, playing hockey with his nephew, you know, a Christmas day, you know, on the floor, you know, that type of stuff, very intimate. And uh, I, I think the amount of access over the amount of years that we got um, is it, probably going to be the most shocking thing that, that people see about this. Just, it has everything because you've got one fighter who started out that he was the first Quebec fighter in, a, in the UFC. And now, you know, he's basically uh, lost his last fight and he's been kicked out of the UFC. And then you have George St. Pierre, who's like the champion who's cleaned out the division. And, you know, having followed those two fighters over that story, I mean, you can really, when you do a documentary, you can only really cover two stories. You can either cover a fighter on his way up or you can cover a fighter on his way down. And we actually have both at the same time. And both um, showing the interaction as this is happening. So... I don't see, I don't really foresee how a documentary about MMA could could be better than this. All right, now give us the rundown of when we can see this bad boy out in on DVD or in theaters. Uh, when's it going to be released and where can we check it out? Well, uh, I was down at the Toronto Film Festival uh, offices yesterday and I'm working on getting it in there and that's our first goal. You know, we can't control whether they accept it. Uh, I can tell you that... Um, you know, Steve and I both watched this rough cut, and a rough cut is not your final, is not your final, but when you submit to a film festival, you can submit a rough cut. And it was very hard, like the first cut, where like we rated it, for example, like a two. You know what I mean? We were very hard on ourselves. In this cut, we were like, we both individually said this is an eight out of 10. So to have a rough cut, eight out of 10, and all Canadian content, submitted to the Toronto Film Festival, I saw what the documentaries are that they chose last year and things like that. The only way I can see them not choosing this is if there's a bias against MMA, you know, which unfortunately can happen because, you know, a lot, especially the um, older crowd, they may still have uh, a prejudice against it. But other than that, I think that it'll get in, you know, and if not, you know, we'll go to whatever plan B is, but it's good enough that, um, 